Hi everybody, this is Brett Simon. Uh, so every year on the 1st of January, uh, we get access to the SEAC data, um, which is data which is incredibly useful to understand uh, all the cases in the, um, in the government system for DV lottery each year. Um, and each year I use that data to uh, analyze progress, predict um, what will happen, um, in, in that year, etc., and just understand where case numbers, um, you know, exist. Uh, and it's incredibly useful. We've been getting this data extracted for a number of years. Um, uh, and, and, you know, it's just incredibly useful data. So you will, if you're a DV Lottery 2021 case, um, this information is going to be very interesting to you. Um, and it, will show you where your case exists within all of the other cases within your region. So what is the SEAC data? Well, SEAC is a database where every single case, every immigrant case and non-immigrant case um, is stored in the system. And we can put in a particular uh, visa case number, immigrant visa case number in the format that you're used to seeing. For example, I've put in uh, 2021 OC3298. Um, you enter the code, uh, which you see here, this is called a capture code, uh, 3N3RB8. Okay, and click submit. And oh, I've got that timed out, so I've got to do that again. Uh, YR346B. Okay, submit. Okay, and then you'll get the information about the case. Now, in this case, um, there's almost nothing there because the case is at MVC. So that's the only thing we know. So what I'll do is I'll put in a 2020 case. So you can see the sort of thing that we would normally um, see. I'll have to find a case here probably. Uh, let's just guess AF11. We'll put in 4K, 4K QA. I might have to try a couple. Oh, here we go. Okay, so then this is a 2020 case. So this is once we actually see the data um, and we see the data maturing and cases have gone uh, through the various statuses, you'll see data like this. So um, this is a 2020 case, um, AF11. It's at uh, the Embassy CRO, which is Cairo. Um, and, uh, and you can see that there were two, um, two cases on here. Zero, 01, which is the main selectee, and a derivative, which is typically the spouse, but the spouse, but it could be a child. Um, you'll see some cases that have, uh, you know, three, four, five, um, you know, different uh, case numbers on there. Um, when I say case numbers, obviously they're all under AF11, but then you've got the derivative number zero one, zero two, and so on. And zero one is always the principal selectee, and then the derivatives are always zero two and up. All right, so you can tell a number of things um, from this. Um, firstly, we can figure out what embassies um, the cases are at. Um, we can see the, um, the, the case was created 23rd of October 2018. That, interestingly, is the date of uh, entry. So this person that entered the lottery entered the lottery on that date during the, uh, the entry period. And, um, and then the last updated is, is just an update date for this particular file, uh, this particular case number in the database. So this was last updated in November of 2019. So you can see this was a very, uh, very low DV2020 case number that thankfully uh, was issued. Um, I should imagine that person, AF11, that was issued in Cairo is probably living in the USA now. Um, okay, so that's what the case would look like when they're issued. Um, the different statuses we have that we see on there is at NVC, uh, which means which is the starting position for all cases. Um, you'll see ready, which is when the case has been sent to the embassy after the 2NL. Um, and then you'll see either refused or issued. Sometimes you'll see a status called in transit, which is where the case is in between KCC, KCC have sent it to the embassy, but the embassy haven't yet um, acknowledged in the CX system that they've received that file. Um, and sometimes you'll also see transfer. Um, so that's pretty much it these days. There used to be 
Another state is called administrative processing. Um, but now administrative processing or AP cases are marked as refused the same, as, same status as cases which have been completely refused. That's frustrating to me. It's annoying that they've done that, but um, uh, but administrative processing is a temporary refusal uh, which can be overcome, usually for mis missing documentation, something like that. Um, and so the applicant has been refused, but in that case, it's a temporary refusal. The applicant can overcome the refusal by providing the missing document. That's what um, AP really means. Um, so now they just they just mark that as refused. Okay, so now you know what SEAC data is. For several years now, we've figured out various ways to extract this data. You can see that I was able to put in a particular 2021 case, and in the same way, if I put, if I change this and put in another case, um, I think AF starts at case number six. Um, we'll do refresh of that number. We'll put in a case B B4 S5A. This 5A, okay, and then this is a real case, it's at MVC, right? Now I started off with AF6. I happen to know that if I search for case number AF5, and uh, let's refresh that, uh, KJMV. Now I'm going to get a hole here. This is what is called a hole. Oh, that's interesting. What do I do there? Um, I must have mistyped it. BHU. H Y A, H Y A. Um, it says yes. Doesn't doesn't return any data. Okay, so um, where the search doesn't return any data, that's what I call a hole. You, if you've been listening to me um, for any period of time, you should know what I'm talking about when I talk about holes. But these are essentially uh, gaps in the numbering range where um, before before the cases were even announced as being winners and not winners, etc. Um, some cases are disqualified right from the beginning. It's part of the lottery draw process. It's part of the normal process. Um, but a lot of holes exist within, uh, within the cases. So if you're case number 1000, for example, you will not have 999 cases in front of you. You have some number less than that. And um, there'll be some number of real cases and some number of holes within that 1000 cases, right? So the holes, um, when you search for the uh, search for a number and it comes back with this, it means it's a hole. It means there's no real case there. And I happen to know, and I'll show you why I know in a moment, that the Africa cases start at case number six. Right. So, um, so okay. So we've got the data. You, hopefully, you understand the types of statuses that we can see, and you now know the difference between a real case and a hole. Right. Um, so uh, let me show you what a tremendous uh, gentleman has been doing for us. Um, he has extracted all of the data um, that we see in the SEAC database um, for DV2021. So we have all of the SEAC 2021 data. And you are um, welcome to go and have a look at his website. Uh, it's a gentleman called Zarthisius. Um, he pulls out this data for us, puts it into a web page, allows you to download the data from this file. This is the raw SEAC data here. And as the year develops, he's going to continue to pull that data out and we'll be able to see uh, changes happening to the data. So if you look at a, um, a previous year, for example, if we look at 2019, um, what you'll see is uh, in regions like, for example, like Africa, um, you'll see all the case numbers there that they had. You can see different colors uh, representing the different statuses. I'll describe that in a moment. And you can see that um, the data is extracted. We normally extract it at the end of each month or the beginning of the month. Um, and so uh, Zarthesius uh, extracted that several times. And of course, uh, there's a gap here in the data where nothing was happening. We didn't bother to extract that data. We're also able to um, figure out which cases get the two NLs. The, the, uh, interview schedules, we'll be able to figure that out from the data as well. And Zarthisius publishes this data in a, in a way that we can see uh, at a glance how the cases are laid out. So, for example, this is Africa in DV2020. 
you can see how much blue color there is there. The blue, blue color is holes. You can see an enormous number of holes um, throughout the range up to case number, uh, what, 73,000 or so um, for DV 2020. Um, so all of the cases were in there, but they, they cut off at 73,000. If we compare Africa to um, DV 2021, we can see the highest case number here seems to be about 88,000 or 87,000, um, I should imagine. And, um, and you can see how uh, in the beginning there's less holes than we had in DV 2020. And, there, and that sort of holes number seems to go along like that. And then it steps down to another level and another level and so on. Um, and if I take a picture of this, let me just... Um, let me just mark this up to make it a little bit more clear what we're talking about here. Um, okay, so if I take a picture of this, I ah, hate that that appears over the top. Hang on, if I can get rid of that. Um, might work better from there. Okay, let's just grab that. It's not the whole thing, but it will show the principle. Okay, so um, I can now draw some lines on here to explain what is going on there's there's a sort of a standard level of cases where the blue area the, the blue area is this area right the, these are all holes and the area bar, uh, below that are all cases at mvc and there's a cutoff line there and you can see that the, there seems to be a sort of a sudden decrease in the in the average or an increase in the number of holes and a decrease in the number of cases and so we get to that sort of level and as we went across the um, the uh, the number range there, you can see that there's another decrease later on as well. The decreases are when a particular country stops getting cases. Okay, so um, uh, there is a full explanation of this. I don't think I want to go into it in full detail right now, but there is a full explanation. I've created a video. And I've got a, uh, an article that explains what I call the holes theory. Holes theory is fact. Um, it's a reality. I know all about it and I've explained it in great detail. Um, but for now, to not complicate this video too much, I'll just leave it at, at this, that we can, see, we can see how many holes there are, we can see how many cases there are, and uh, we can see the data for each of the regions. Okay, so um, so we can switch through the, the regions here. We can change the regions. So right now we're looking at Africa. We can have a look at Asia. That's how Asia looks. Um, you can see there are two. With with Asia, it's very easy to, um, to, to determine which countries are sort of uh, chopped off, as it were. That, that point there is where Nepal finishes. That's um, up until the end of Nepal, there are... Uh, around about 60% real cases and around about 40% holes. After Nepal stops getting numbers assigned to them, um, then we see the uh, the drop is going down to about 40% or so uh, for real cases, so a 20% drop. And um, and then after and that's that's then Iran and the rest of Asia in there. And then after Iran is capped at about what 20 20,000 or so, just maybe 21,000. Um, then there's a drop to the rest of Asia. Now, if you've seen my previous videos where I had explained um, how, uh, how the numbers would be laid out, you will know by now that I predicted almost exactly this chart for, for Asia. Um, and I explained that in great detail about how that would be. Um, and, you know, hopefully you've seen, that, uh, you've seen that video. But that video is certainly worth having a look at. And the uh, the other videos that explain the other regions as well, um, you know, are similarly interesting. Okay, so that's Asia. Have a look at EU. EU is pretty consistent across the range. There does look as if there's um, one, perhaps two countries cut off. <coughs> In the old days, Uzbekistan and Ukraine would always be cut off. Um, I'm not 100% sure those two countries are cut off at the moment, but um, you can see there is certainly some sort of increase in the number of holes in later numbers but and that's um that's an indication that there's at least one or two countries cut off um if we look at oceana we can see the case numbers go you know pretty pretty normal all the way through with a 
uh, a holes rate of around about 50%. Um, and if we look at South America, we can see how the um, distribution of cases are for South America. Okay. Now, what can we can, what can we see from <coughs> excuse me <coughs> what can we see from this data? Well, number one, we now know the highest case numbers, and I've actually plotted that out on a um, on a I've taken the data from uh, that site and I've plotted out the numbers. Now, again, I had previously predicted the uh, the highest case numbers that I thought we were going to see based on um, a poll that I had taken with all of you, my my uh, listeners and, and readers. Um, so uh, I'd asked you guys to come up with, uh, to give me your case numbers. And from that, I, I predicted a case number range that would be the maximum case number that was assigned. I had also assumed a derivative rate to come up with the number of likely cases that we would see in each region and therefore how many holes we would have and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but now, of course, I've got the real data, so I can take you through the real, the real data. So for Africa, I thought the highest case number was going to be 88,000. It's actually case number 86133 is the highest assigned case in Africa. Okay, That doesn't mean that's going to be the highest case number that will get a visa. That's the highest selectee number that there is. They may or may not go current at that, uh, you know, at that number. I don't know. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how many cases uh, have actually been notified that they are winners and have been invited to go for further processing. Okay, then for Asia region, I thought there was going to be cases up to about 38,000. It actually was um, a little bit lower than that, 36,939. For EU, I thought we would see case numbers as high as 41,000. In reality, I was 900 too high. Um, we're, the highest case number is 40,091. In uh, Oceania, I predicted there would be cases up to case number 3,300. Actually, I was two out. Uh, 3,298 is the real highest case number. I think I'll give myself a pretty accurate um, pass mark for that one. And um, in South America, I'd predicted 4,500 um, as being the highest case number. The highest case number is actually 4,582. Now, there's a very small chance that somebody out there listening to me now is saying, hang on a minute, you're telling me that I couldn't have a case number higher than 86133. There might be, in a very um, in a small amount of cases, there may be uh, one or two cases higher than these case numbers. It's very unlikely, but it's possible and they're what case numbers I call outliers. Um, and what happens is we, uh, Zarthesius and I agree where he's going to check until, um, at what number is he going to stop his, his searching through the database. Um, and we have to sort of somewhat predict the highest case number for him to be doing that efficiently. Um, so there's a chance that there might be a huge gap between case number 86133 and some case number, let's say 89,000 or something, or 90,000. Very unlikely, um, but it has happened in previous years, so I just wanted to raise that. So you know, do let me know if that's the, if that's the reality with your case. Um, but otherwise, these are going to be the highest case numbers um, that I would believe. Okay? Um, I, North America um, has a highest case number of 21. Um, with 29 selectees. I don't talk much about North America. There are a few uh, a few cases, but um, there's only 13, uh, 13 actual cases in, uh, in North America. So it's only one country. So um, it's normally too small to actually think about. Okay, so, um, so there we have the highest case numbers. I had assumed some derivative numbers in order to predict how many cases we would see. And I took the derivative rate based on my sort of common sense and understanding from previous years. But I did point out that these numbers were likely to change in DV 2021. I can't be 100% accurate on these numbers because the numbers actually vary year to year based on um, what countries um, participate and, and where the cases go, etc. There's a slight difference between each country, even within a region. Um, so the derivative rate, for example, for Nepal could be, let's say, 2.3, and for um, some, you know, for Iran, the derivative rate might be 1.7. Uh, 
uh, something like that. So that the, depending on the mix between Iran and Nepal, um, we would see a different, um, a different blending of derivative rate for the region. So in in reality, I've been I was a little bit off in my um, estimations here, but not largely so. So I thought we were going to see 1.6 um, derivatives uh, as a derivative rate. We're actually seeing 1.64 for Africa. I had predicted for Asia 1.76. We're actually seeing 1.92. I predicted 1.95. We're actually seeing 2.09 for Europe. Um, for Oceania, I had predicted 1.6, and we're actually seeing 1.71. And then for South America, I predicted 2, and we're actually seeing 2.01. So that, that one's actually right on the nose. Um, knowing the derivative rate, um, and I get the derivative rate, by, by the way, by knowing how many uh, selectees we've got um, and how many actual cases we have, right? So... Um, 53,649 divided by 32,753, which is the number of actual cases we have. That's how I get the derivative rate there. Um, so I actually work backwards. When I'm trying to predict it, I work forwards. But when, I'm, when I have the number of actual cases um, and I know the number of selectees, then I can work out the derivative rate, right? Um, and just to show you, if you download the data from Zarthisius' site, you'll see data like this. Let me pick um, North America to make this really simple and fast. Um, so if I show you all of North American region, right? This is North America, case number one, two, four, six, seven, and so on, up to case number 21. There's a total of 13 cases, right? I can always see the count there. Um, and here are the cases, right? So I know how many cases there are. There's 13 of them. And I know how many winners there are, the 29. So if I want to calculate um, the derivative rate in North America, I'd simply do, um, oops, I'd do this. What am I doing? I should be copying this. There you go. Um, so the derivative rate in North America is 2.23. So that's 29 divided by 13 cases. That's basically exactly how I've achieved all of these numbers. Okay, So you can download this data yourself and you can have a look, but you can see just using how I, how I uh, looked at the data for North America there, you can do the same for any region. Uh, if we look at Oceania, for example, um, and we have a look, we just scroll down all the way to the end of the file. Oops, it's gone too far. There's the end of the file. So that's the highest case number, which I mentioned on the summary data there. 3298, uh, which I put, uh, where's my highest number? 3298 is that number there, Oceana, right? So looking at the data is 3298. And by coming back to the beginning, pushing home, um, and then looking in this region, we can see how many cases there are, 1645. So 1645 is that number there, right? So that's how, what I did for each of those regions. I took the number of cases and the highest case number that I'm that I'm seeing in actual, and um, based on that, I'm figuring out um, and, and the number of selectees, by the way, which was the published numbers that we saw, um, and from that, I'm getting the derivative rate. Okay, so um, so this is interesting. Now, what else can we do with this data? Well, um, so we know there are 1,645, let's say you're in Oceana, and, um, and you have case number 3,000. We know there are 1,645 cases, but if you're at case number 3,000, how many cases are there in front of you or behind you? Right? Okay, so you're this case, OC3000. Uh, All right, how many cases are in front of you? Um, and how many are behind you, as it were? Well, 1645 is the total, and including case number th uh, 3000 itself, there are 157 cases. So 1645 less the 157, that's how many cases are in front of uh, case number 3000, right? 
Uh, that's how that works. Now you can do the same thing in any region. If your case num, if your Africa case number eighty thousand, and you want to know how many cases are in front of you or behind you or how high your case number is, you can now see where your case belongs within the whole region, right? So you you can now get a very precise idea of how high your case number is. Um, where in the whole case number range is your cases. You can figure out how many people there are um, uh, likely to be in front of you and so on. So let me just do something here to for case number 3000 as an illustration. This is Oceana case number 3000, right? So if I figure out how many cases there are in front of that Oceana case, there are 1,488 cases in front of case number 3,000, right? Um, and we'll just do a little bit of math here. We'll, we'll do that. 1,488 cases. So we'll just put this alongside here. 1,488. So there are 1,488 cases in front of case, uh, case number 3,000. The derivative rate um, for Oceana is 1.71. So how many people... Um, is that 1488? That's 1488 times the the actual derivative rate, which is that. So there are 2546 people in front of case number 3000, right? There are 1488 cases in front of case number 3000 in in uh, in Oceana. So that using that method, you can figure out exactly where you sit. Um, in the in the region, how many people and how many cases are in front of you? Right. <coughs> so that should be helpful to you all. Uh, it should be nice to know. Um, by all means, download your own copy of this file uh, from Zathisius' site here. Go to uh, his site. I'll put the link in the in the data below. That's the link there. Um, come to this page. Uh, find the raw data and you can open that up in Google Sheets or um, Office Online or whatever whatever you prefer um, to start playing with the data as I've shown you there. Um, once we get different extracts, by the way, you'll be able to see this, this bar will start to become useful. So if we look at 2020 data, for example, um, this is a time slice. So um, Zarthesius grabbed the data on the 1st uh, of January, uh, actually the 2nd of January, um, and then February, March, and so on. And so each time he grabbed the data, you can see how the cases changed from period to period. Um, the different colors here represent the different statuses. So in a normal year, you can see how the cases are developing. Of course, nobody has been interviewed yet. In fact, almost uh, almost nobody. There have been a few interviews, but interestingly, they're not recorded in SIAC. Um, so uh, I'm intrigued about that, by the way, but um, but that's another topic. Um, but uh, you can normally see the progression and the progress that's being made on cases. So you can see these colors change. You can see cases that, that go from uh, uh, SIAC, which is no response, to ready, to in transit, and then to either refused or um, or issued. Um, and occasionally you'll see them transfer and, and you can see the blue cases there as well. But um, So you can begin to sort of understand how this will work. And I'm sure over time, once we're seeing interviews, this will become more interesting to some extent. But at least for now, you can figure out um, exactly where you sit within, within the region for 2021. So anyway, I hope that's interesting to you um, and useful. Um, I've been waiting for this data. I know some of you have been waiting for this data as well. Um, and uh, let the analysis and the fun begin in terms of uh, understanding this data and figuring out what it means for you, for your case, for your chances of, uh, of progression and so on. Now, let me just put a caveat on all of that. Um, of course, this year is going to be exceptional. Um, COVID is causing one way or the other through the bans or through the embassies being shut down. COVID is, um, is affecting DB2021 progress. We all know that. You know that you're not getting interviews at the moment and, and you, you, you know something about that. Um, so that is certainly changing things. 
right now. Um, and so the normal thing that we would do on this would be to use this data to perform mathematical analysis to try and figure out where the cutoffs should be and what the month to month progress should be. But all of that math at the moment is largely irrelevant because it really depends, um, the situation depends more on the COVID situation and the bans and the, you know, that and whether the embassies are working and whether KCC is scheduled and the lawsuits and all of that. All of those factors are much more critical um, than the mathematics. The mathematics may not even come into play. The math really uh, allows us to predict what would happen in a normal year. But in a year like this, things are unpredictable. So I am not going to be doing predictions based on the SEAC data until we have some sort of uh, smooth flowing and we have interviews returning and that sort of thing. And I strongly suggest you don't try and predict anything either because it's, um, uh, it's just a, a, an exercise in frustration until we know that interface, uh, interviews have started. Okay. All right. I think that's probably all I wanted to cover. Um, let me just ask you to uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you're, you're watching the blog um, and that you're getting the latest information from me. I provide a ton of useful information and I work with people such as us this year to make sure uh, you have this data. Um, and I'm enormously grateful to, to this guy for, for presenting the data in such a useful way. And you can go back and see previous years and compare to previous years. Um, and, uh, you know, it's phenomenal to have this information. I can't tell you how lucky we are uh, to have this information readily at hand and easily understood like, uh, like we see here. Um, this didn't used to be available um, prior to about 2014, 2015. Um, we weren't able to get this data and, and in, I think it was in uh, 2014 was probably the first time that I was able to access this data through a very smart guy. Uh, who I still remember to this day, Rafikibo, uh, as I call him, uh, if, uh, uh, you know, he figured out how to extract this data and we've had different developers work on that in the meantime um, to extract this data in, in clever ways. We've also even had human help. Uh, all of you guys uh, in previous years actually helped extract this data. Um, so, uh, you know, we've managed to harness uh, um, clever programs to uh, to read those codes. It costs us a little bit of money, um, but I split the cost with Sarthisius um, so that uh, it makes it affordable and it's, um, it's somewhat of a science project for us. So, um, you know, we're paying for that now. Um, so uh, because we're paying for it, because Sarthisius is extracting it, you're able to get this data. It's in the public domain. Um, so there you go. I hope that's uh, useful for you. All right, everybody, I'll call it a night now. Uh, I've had a great day at the beach, um, a little bit tired, so I'm going to call it a day um, as soon as I can, and uh, I'll publish this, this video tonight so you can be looking at this tomorrow. All right, then. Bye-bye, everyone. Good night.